Hi everyone, this is GKCS. Uh, this is a video on designing WhatsApp. Uh, it's a chat-based application, so once you know how to design WhatsApp, you will be able to design any chat-based application to a large extent. Uh, the special things about WhatsApp are that they have group messaging uh, and they have these read receipts. So those are the two key features that people look for in a normal system design interview. But there's also other features that we'll be talking about and we'll be talking about the features that we should probably not take up during an interview and you know, basically uh, choose the kind of things that we are doing so that we can actually finish in the hour that we have. Now amongst all the features that you can uh, ask your interviewer as to, you know, would you like this, would you like that, uh, probably you should start simple and you should start with things that you already know because I have noticed that the first feature that you ask for, the interviewer usually says yes. So um, one of the things I'm comfortable with is group messaging. So WhatsApp has groups, at most 200 people can enter these groups. Um, and so group messaging is something that I understand to a good extent. Image sharing is another good question to ask uh, as to, you know, are images going to be shared in these messages? And an almost obvious answer is yes, we will allow image sharing or video sharing also. A good question, but I mean, this is something that if you have used WhatsApp, uh, you'll know about is uh, sent, delivered and read receipts. So you have those tick marks coming in based on what stage is the message on. The final two things are not critical to an application uh, in terms of features, but it's nice to think of in an engineering way. Uh, the first one being that is the person online or, and if they're not, then when was the last time that they were seen on the chat? Uh, and the second thing is, are the chats temporary or are they permanent? So if you have a look at Snapchat or even if you have a look at WhatsApp, in a way they are much more temporary than uh, a lot of the office messaging applications. Uh, the reason for this is because you want a lot of privacy, you want to give the user a lot of power. Uh, also, it actually saves a lot of storage space uh, if you think about the chats being stored in the user's applications only. But uh, if there is any sort of compliance that you need or if there is any official communication, then you, know, uh, you want that message to be stored somewhere forever. So that's another thing that we'll be asking. Although WhatsApp gives you, so to speak, only temporary chats, yeah, uh, if you delete the app and if your friend also deletes the app, those chat messages are lost forever. So one thing I'd like to say is that image sharing has already been taken up on this channel. Uh, if you want to have a look at how this is done, have a look at the Tinder video. Um, it explains how images can be stored, retrieved, etc, etc uh, in, a, in a sensible engineering way. So you're left with four features uh, for this video and the first one we'll be picking up is group messaging. Before we get to group messaging, we need to first talk about how does one person send a message to another person. So that is one-to-one -one chat. And that is our requirement, which is one-to-one -one chat. All right, this is what we're coming to. Okay, let's take this step by step. Uh, a lot of the things that I'll be discussing in this are there in the system design playlist. So have a look at that when you're looking for things like load balancing, when you're looking for things like uh, messaging queues. I'll be using those things as abstractions, as structures to meet all the features that we have talked about. Uh, if you want any detail, then you can always go there. Single point of failure is also something pretty important in the WhatsApp architecture. So have a look at those. Now let's start. You have the application installed in your cell phone. Uh, you connect to WhatsApp on the cloud. Uh, the place that you're connecting to is called a gateway. Uh, the reason for this is because you will be using an external protocol when you're talking to WhatsApp, but WhatsApp might be talking in a different language with its internal services. Uh, main reason being that you don't need that much security, you don't need those big headers uh, that HTTP provides you when you're talking internally, because a lot of the security mechanisms are taken care of on the gateway itself. Right, so once you do connect to the gateway, uh, let's assume that you're actually sending a message to person B. So you are person A and you're sending to person B. Person A connects to the gateway. The gateway actually needs to send it to person B somehow. So you could store this information as to which users are connected to which box in the gateway itself. In that case, you would need some sort of a user to box mapping. Okay, for the gateway service, which is a microservice itself, it needs to store the information as to this user ID is currently connected to box number two. So if this is box number one, two, three, then there needs to be information saying that B is connected to two and A is connected to one. When you have this kind of information being stored on the boxes itself, it's going to be an expensive thing. Why is it expensive? 
because maintaining a connection, a TCP connection itself takes some memory. Uh, what you want to do is you want to actually increase the maximum number of connections that you can store in a single box. And you don't want that memory to be wasted by keeping information uh, for who is connected to which box. Okay. Uh, the second thing is this information is being duplicated on all three servers. Either it's being duplicated, or there's some caching mechanism, or there is some database which is actually handling this. Uh, this is transient information, so there's going to be a lot of updates going on over here. Uh, and this is, this is not nice. There's a lot of coupling that I can see in this system. So what you want to do is you want to keep a dumb connection. Yeah, this TCP connection should be dumb in the sense that it just takes information and gives information. It doesn't know what it's doing apart from that. The person you want to be asking for when it comes to information on who is connected to which box is a microservice in itself. And this microservice can be the sessions microservice. What is the sessions microservice store? Well, uh, who's connected to which box? <laughs> Just that information that we were storing over here uh, and was being handled by the gateway has been decoupled from the system and been sent to the sessions microservice. You can see that there are multiple servers for single point of failure uh, avoidance. Okay, so when a user is sending, user A is sending some message, it actually asks for send message with the user ID for B. When the gateway gets this message, it's pretty dumb. It doesn't know what to do. It just sends it to the session service. Okay, this session service is indirectly a router. When it gets this message, when it gets this request rather of send message to user B, what it does is it figures out where does user B exist, which box is user B connected to, and then routes this message, basically sending this message to gateway two to send it back to user B. Uh, now what's happened is A has sent a message to B. Interesting. How can A send a message to B if the server is sending this, this final bit where the gateway two is sending a message to B? This can't be done using HTTP. It's a server to client protocol. I mean, rather it's a client to server protocol. So the client sends requests, the server gives responses. So you cannot send a message from the server to the client. You can only send requests from client to server. Um, there's many ways to get, you know, uh, get over this using HTTP itself. One of them is long polling. In which case what happens is every minute or so, B can ask for, hey, are there any new messages for me? And then the gateway or the sessions management service, uh, whichever one you would like, can send it the message. Uh, of course, this is not real time. And if you want something real time, uh, especially for chat applications, which is, it's very important to have the real time thing. So HTTP is not something that we can use. And we need another protocol over TCP, right? Uh, and the thing that we're looking for really are WebSockets. So WebSockets, are super nice when it comes to chat applications. Uh, the main reason being that they, they can allow you peer-to-peer -peer communication. So A can send to B, B can send to A. There's no client or server semantics over here. So uh, with that, what happens is literally the server can send a message to the client B. Okay, so we are happy, B got the message. What now? Well, B got the message. So that means it has been delivered. At this point, user A should be notified that the message has been delivered. There's one place uh, that I missed out on. Uh, when the message actually gets to the gateway and gets to the session service, what it can do is you can send a parallel response to gateway one saying that, okay, I got the message. Now it's going to be sent to user B when it's possible. Let's say a different database for the chat. Uh, and because it's stored in the database, it's safe, it's persistent. Uh, it'll keep retrying the message till user B gets it. So A is guaranteed that B is going to get the message. So it should get the sent receipt. So just give a response saying that, okay, I got the message. Gateway one is now going to send the message to user A. So sent is taken care of. When this entire flow is completed, when B gets the message for the first time, uh, how do we deliver a, I mean, how do we give a delivery receipt? Once you send the message to B and B actually got the message, it should respond. I mean, it should again go to gateway two and say that, got the message, all right? That's an acknowledgement, a TCP acknowledgement. When gateway two gets this message, it sends it again to the session service saying that, hey, this message was received. So 
this message was received the message is going to be containing a to and a from field yeah so the session service what it can do is okay the message has been received by the person who was tagged over here to which is b so the person who sent the message from a should get a delivery receipt and so sessions find out uh, finds out again where a exists that is box number 1 send a delivery receipt a gets a delivery receipt okay and of course you can think about how red is going to work the moment a person opens the application comes and opens this chat tab they send a message saying that red and the exact same flow takes care of red also all right so that's a lot to digest if you like then you can go through this a little more uh, this is the very first feature uh, of sending and basically delivering uh, receipts to the sender okay the second feature we are talking about is quite simple uh, it's about the last seen or is the person online right now uh, at a scale i mean at huge scale when there's millions of users everything gets complicated but uh, one of the principal architectural things that we can do over here is this simply put b just wants to know when a was online the last time uh, this information has to be stored somewhere and what the server can do is it can ask a but that would be stupid so instead a is not even in the picture now and the only messages which will be sent and received are from b and the server so b asks the server when was a online last there needs to be some information in some table saying that this user was last online at this time so some timestamp and a will have some entry over here uh, with a particular timestamp the only question which remains is how is this row maintained the last seen timestamp for a particular user this key value pair uh, whenever a user a makes does an activity basically sending a message or reading a message or any kind of request to the server should be logged as an activity and that should be that current timestamp should be persisted uh, in this table in that way we can say that whenever a did anything definitely they were online uh, which means that the last seen timestamp needs to be updated based on this b can be told that if a is online or not uh, one of the key features over here is that if a was online 3 seconds ago then b shouldn't be told that uh, they were online 3 seconds ago instead the the showing tag should be online right probably they haven't done any activity in the last 3 seconds you can keep this threshold to anything that you like maybe 10 seconds maybe 15 seconds uh, but the important thing is they are either online or they were last seen at least let's say 20 seconds ago the last seen tag is a little tricky to update even after taking in all activities so what i'll be doing is whenever a user sends a request to the gateway i'll be having a microservice which is the last seen microservice and what this will be doing is it's doing user activity tracking any time there's an activity they definitely send a message to the gateway when they send a message to the gateway i'm going to say that they're last seen at this point now interestingly there might be some requests which are not being sent by the user but by the application itself uh, for example when you poll for certain messages maybe you're offline you're not using the app but uh, you want your application to notify you whenever there's a there's a message so for example delivery receipt that's not an activity by me so the request should be smart in the sense that the client should be smart saying that this is a user activity and this is something that the application itself is doing okay so two types of messages being sent by the client uh, one type is user activities and the other one is uh, let's say system generated or app messages app requests this can be a flag in the request itself if it's an app request don't send it to the last seen service if it's a user activity send it to the last seen service it'll go and update the uh, last seen timestamp for this user and in that way what can happen is user b can say whether the user is online or at least they were last seen at this timestamp by querying this service so feature 3 is also done all right so we are very close to actually completing this chat messaging application uh, as you can see it's a pretty complicated diagram but we we'll get to everything one by one um, certain things that i like to skip over so to speak 
uh, is load balancer because we have already talked about this. So I won't be talking about how the load balancer balances the load across the system. Uh, there's one interesting thing which we have not talked about in the series, which is uh, service discovery or heartbeat maintenance. And that will be taken in a separate video. But uh, it's pretty interesting. You can have a look uh, at some blogs and probably post them in the description below. Uh, the authentication service is another thing that I'll be talking about later. Um, main reason being that it's quite simple, but uh, it's something worth talking about as a basic principle. So that will also be taken later. As you can see, these four services are things which are not really relevant to WhatsApp, so to speak. Uh, the profile service is a very generic service. Image services, sending emails and sending SMSs. Okay, then what is core to the chat application? Sending messages. Now you can see that there are five users that are drawn over here. Um, the red guys are in one group, the green guys are in the other group. So whenever a user from the red box sends a message, it should go to all the other red boxes. And this is the feature of group messaging, right? So this red user is connected to gateway one, while we have the other red users connected to gateway two. So let us assume that we send a group message through this user. The problem here is that if the session service stores all the information for all groups, let us say uh, the red group has these three users and they're connected to these three boxes, uh, it's too complicated for the session service to handle. I mean, it's something that you can decouple. So that's what we have done. We have decoupled the information for who is existing in which group in a group service. Now the session service, when it gets a message from a red user, is going to be asking the group service, who are the other group members in this group. The group service can then respond saying 10 members with these user IDs exist in this group. Now the session service runs through its own database. Usually this information is going to be cached as much as possible, but it can figure out where these users are connected to uh, through its database. I mean, those 10 users, it had a mapping for user ID to connection and that connection tells you which box which gateway it exists in. So with this information, it can then route the messages to each of these users one by one. Um, what if the group has too many members? Too bad. Uh, WhatsApp actually gives you a maximum limit of 200. Uh, there's a lot of chat applications which try to contain that to 500, 600. Uh, main reason being that you'll be otherwise fanning out the request too much. If you've seen the Instagram design video, uh, what happens in that is also when a celebrity actually posts something, it's effectively sending messages to sometimes millions of people and that's not practical so you have to either batch process them or you have to wait for these guys to pull them uh, in a chat application because you want the messages to be real, real time as much as possible uh, you can't really have too much of a pull mechanism so instead what you do is you limit the number of people in a group so 200 is a slightly reasonable number compared to millions yeah it's a very reasonable number so what we are going to be doing is we are going to be limiting the number of users we have to some number x and we are going to be assuming that the sessions um, can handle web sockets sending these messages to the relevant users okay now let's get into the details of this mechanism i mean we have the bare bones thing how it's going to work but the details are important uh, the first thing that i would do uh, in this architecture is because a lot of users are going to be connecting to my gateways these gateways are going to be starving for memory that's the reason why we have separated out the session service. That's one good way uh, to reduce memory footprint. Uh, the second thing you can do is passing the message, right? Maybe the message is sent over HTTP. It's a JSON message, so on and so forth. Uh, you don't really want to pass the message, convert it into an object, do some smart things on it, find out whether it has been authenticated or not uh, on the gateway itself. All those responsibilities, as many responsibilities as you can, you want to push away from the gateways. Because those are websockets, those are expensive, those are actual users connected to your box. So I would send an unpassed message to the session service or to anyone I am sending it to. Uh, one smart way to actually send an unpassed message to any uh, service that you want to is to have this unpassed message go through a parser microservice. Okay, you don't really need uh, too many servers here, just two are enough. So I'll just call it uh, parser and unparser microservice. Uh, what it's going to be doing is it's going to take the unpassed message and going to be converting it to a sensible message. So if your internal 
protocol is uh, instead of HTTP, you have written something or TCP, or you have, you have something like Thrift, which is used by Facebook internally. So I would say Thrift. Then you can you can pass the message over here itself, right? What is the advantage? Uh, let me just again uh, reiterate. You get an electronic message over here. You send the electronic message forward. There is no work that you're doing on the gateway itself. This electronic message will be converted to a sensible programming language object by this parser or unparser. All right, and that will then route it to the right place. Okay, so that's one way to reduce the memory footprint over here. What are the other concerns or key areas that we should focus on? Group ID to user ID, and this is a one to many mapping. Right, one group can have many user IDs, and to reduce uh, a lot of the duplication in information that you have, we go for something called consistent hashing. Uh, you should have a look at that. Consistent hashing helps you reduce the memory footprint across servers by uh, delegating only some information to some boxes. Okay, have a look at the video in case you're not sure what this is. Uh, consistent hashing is going to allow you to actually route the request to the right box. Uh, what should be routed on? The group ID. Uh, if you have the request routed on the group ID, then it can tell you that for this group, who are the users uh, belonging to this group. All right, so that takes care of the routing mechanism we have. In case, anytime, the group service fails, like you send the message to the box, it failed, what do you do? You can retry, but you can only retry if you know uh, which, what request you needed to send next. So one of the mechanisms for this is message queues. Yeah, we have discussed this in the playlist, so I won't be getting into too much detail, but message queues uh, are nice in the sense that once you give a message to the message queue, it ensures that the message will be sent. Maybe now, maybe 10 seconds later, maybe 15 seconds later, those are configurable options. And also how many times you're gonna retry, all of this is configurable in the message queue. If the message queue fa fails to send the message, even after five retries, it can tell you that it's failed, you propagate the failure, all the way to the client, saying that no, I couldn't send this group message. Okay, that's also fine, but the client needs to be told that it's failed or it's cleared. Interestingly, when the group service gets this message, it can send a response that yes, I, I got the message. Sessions then sends a response to Gateway, and the user who sent the original message gets a sent tick mark. Okay, uh, group receipts when it comes to uh, delivered or seen is pretty expensive. Uh, main reason being that everyone needs to say, yeah, I got the message, I got the message, and then finally it has to come back to this guy. So we won't be getting into that. Many chat applications actually don't even have that, so it's fine, right? The final few interesting things when it comes to chat messaging or group messaging especially, is that you need item potency. Um, there's an entire video I made on retrial and item potency, again, taking the Tinder messaging example. Uh, so you can have a look at that for the technical details. This architecture is actually very resilient, uh, and as a chat system, it's going to do pretty well. Uh, there's some tips and tricks over here uh, that you can you can get to know only if you have worked on messaging systems. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you a few examples. For example, I mean, I was just reading this blog that Facebook Messenger does. Uh, it deprioritizes messages in case there's a huge event, L like let's say New Year's, or let's say some festival like Diwali in India. Uh, there's going to be a lot of messages, everyone's going to be wishing each other Happy Diwali, Happy New Year, uh, and that's, that's going to be putting a lot of load on the system. So, all the principles of rate limiting come in here, uh, where you don't take messages which are very important, uh, or sometimes you just drop messages. Instead of dropping, I mean the best thing to do is to, you know, deprioritize messages. Things like last seen can be ignored, the entire feature can be ignored. Has this message been delivered, has it been received? Those are not as important as actually sending the message to the user. You know, the first thing of the server getting the message and the acknowledgement, that's all the user needs to know. Okay, that's more important than seeing whether the person has read the message or not. So, by deprioritizing unimportant messages, you're actually keeping the system health good and you're, you're performing okay instead of not performing at all. So do check out the course. It's really useful when you are designing systems like these. Of course, uh, this takes care of the last requirement that we had, which was to send group messages. Yeah, that is requirement number one, taking care of in the end. All right, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for 
uh, going through this system design. If you have any doubts or suggestions, you can leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you liked the video, then hit the like button. And if you want further notifications, then hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Oh, and I'll be posting a poll. So vote for what you want to see next time. See ya.